so today I'm going to be attempting to install this Trailtech Vapor dash onto my DRZ 400 SM um, the only additional stuff that I have at the moment is this set of uh, wire crimping splices and some heat shrink wrap for it and uh, I also got the optional mounting bracket so first thing I'm gonna do is uh, take off this headlight cover so I can get to all the wiring also take off the tank which I think is just bolted down there there and then uh, disconnect this fuel there and I should be able to lift the tank right off and then I'm going to just unscrew this and drop it down. So now I've taken off the tank and the front headlight piece. Um, for the tank you had to take off the seat and a couple of the side panels, uh, no big deal. Everything's pretty much obvious as you're taking it off. Uh, and then you've got this little wiring harness here that you can open up and uh, so next thing I'm going to do is try to disconnect the old unit so looks like there's just a couple mounting bolts here here and here so I'm going to go ahead and uh, take off and then disconnect all the wires coming out of it So just be disconnecting all of these harnesses Anything that's going to the tech there or I don't know, odometer speedometer whatever you want to call it So it came out pretty easily. It was just those three uh, Three nuts holding it on and then disconnecting the two harnesses and the speedometer cable right there. Um, so once you disconnect the harnesses and that, it pretty much just pulls right off. Um, next thing I'm going to do, uh, I'm not really sure. I read a tip that this is actually the power socket um, and the red and the black are the power and the ground and the orange is the uh, ignition switch on off so because the trail tech wants constant power we're gonna ignore the orange and take the red and the black I'm just gonna um, I'm gonna take this one here this triple cut off these wires and then uh, splice the trail tech wires into the red and the black ones here so we can reuse this uh, nice socket thing uh, so that's what I'm going to work on now so I can confirm I just did a quick test plugging in uh, this half of the socket into um, the socket where it used to go and I just manually connected the two red wires and the dash turned on when it was plugged in on the other side so um, I crimped the black one already and basically I'm just gonna use another one of these to connect the two reds with a piece of heat shrink so I can make it all nice and tidy when I'm done and uh, then this little wire splice job should be all done. So here's my finished product. It's the three pronger. I got the orange one just hanging off. Um, can't tell if that's focused or not. But uh, yeah, the red and the black are in there with the two connectors and the shrink wrap. Um, I don't like how open these holes are though, I'm going to get some electrical tape and uh, finish this job up, but 
all it's missing is the electrical tape at this point. I just don't have any in my house. Um, so yeah, all I used for that was these little butt splices from Lowe's. It's like two bucks a pack and uh, some heat shrink to go around it. Um, Alright, so next thing I'm gonna do is uh, maybe figure out the mounting for this thing. Uh, be back in a second. So I got this mount here. It looks like it lines up right about like this. And should go in place of the old mount pretty smoothly there. Those two bolts look to line up pretty good. So I'm just gonna get this all assembled and put together real quick and uh, with these two that it gave me with a little bit of blue thread locker on there just to make sure they stay in place. So the next thing I did was run the uh, RPM wire up through here and down around through this little uh, zip tie that was already there and wrapped it around the spark plug wire. Um, of course I'm going to pull it a lot tighter than this and probably electrical tape it. Uh, but I'm just showing you before I tape over it where I wrapped it up at. Um, I'm going to go for the recommended 5 to 6 for now and hope it works. Now I'm going to get started on the magnet installation for the speedometer. So it's going to be one of these things that are all stuck together and uh, I'm going to use a number it looks like a six millimeter um, Allen key to remove one of these rot rotor bolts here so I'm going to go ahead and take that out so now I've got the sensor on there and the next step is to take off the caliper so we can drill ourselves a hole for the sensor mount. So judging by this picture, it looks like for the DRZ, I am going to uh, make the drill hole right about there. So I've marked that spot with a pen and next step is going to drill it out with a 1 8 drill bit. So be back right after that. So I forgot to take a quick video there, but um, drilled it out and put the sensor on. So now it's hopefully ready to go. I'm a little concerned about the distance to the magnet but uh, we'll hope for the best and uh, see if it works at this position alright so I've got the, the sensor routed all the way up with the brake line and then uh, just attached loosely for now I'll clean that up in a bit and Lastly is going to be the radiator. Um, I just loosened the relief screw there that we're gonna take the place of and uh, I was running the bike about two hours ago so a little bit of coolant shot out but uh, you definitely do not want to do this when your bike is hot. Please 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 make sure that when you're doing the coolant part that the bike has been plenty cooled off so you don't get a face full of hot coolant. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and take that screw out and replace it with this one, the temperature screw that they gave me and uh, I think that's the last thing I've got to do. Um, I think it recommends some silicon sealant or something uh, if I have a problem I'll put that on later. I don't have any right now though. So that's all that's left. 
So I'm just going to do that real quick. And just one final once over. I've got everything tidied up in this little mess here. Got the dash unit installed. Uh, we've got our um, speedometer sensor line going down to here attached onto the caliper with the magnetic nut there um, we've got our radiator sensor tapped in here make sure to not put that too tight apparently it can break um, and then we've got the tack sensor coiled about there with the electrical tape and the power was wired into this three prong into the red and black not the orange so everything appears to be good Yeah, so we'll try to get it turned on and see what happens. So just some final notes. Um, I wound up having to move the speedometer sensor because I have a SM model which has a larger, larger front rotor so it was not close enough to the magnet to actually register. So now I moved the wheel speed sensor to the front of this uh, plastic fork guard here so that it comes close to the um, the magnet area as it goes past um, a lot closer than it was before I can always move it down slightly if this still doesn't work consistently but on a quick test run it did um, so that just went right through the plastic here with this screw and of course I'll have to secure that down so it doesn't manage to go hitting the rotor or something wouldn't want that uh, but that's just about done and uh, the tachometer I have that problem where it's a little bit jumpy so someday when I feel like it I will try to splice it directly into the spark plug wire but for now it's just wrapped around about 10 times in there um, another thing to note when you're putting it all back together make sure to remember this second tube I forgot it the first time thought my carburetor had got some junk in it wound up taking the whole carburetor off and cleaning it out and everything and then when I was reattaching it I realized that I never attached this second hose to the gas tank which is why it probably wasn't holding idle all that well um, so now we can turn it on another thing to note is when you turn it on the dash isn't going to come on just yet you actually have to do something um, to activate the sensor or push one of the buttons so one second while I do that so now we got the bike running Tack comes on. You can see the jumpiness right there. But the bar graph seems to be mostly accurate, so that's fine. And then it'll turn off on its own. It'll stay on for about 20 minutes or something. But uh, that's everything all wrapped up. So uh, let me know in the comment section if you have any questions or need any clarification on anything. But that's it.